Okay, so X-Men Evolution has to be my favorite X-Men cartoon. And I think the reason why is because I with turning most of the cast to teenagers, it helps me to relate to them a lot more. And then also, the way that they were written, they felt more like a family. And their relationship felt more believable, in my opinion, compared to other shows, such as the 90s show or Wolverine and the X-Men. Because with the 90s show specifically, I felt that they weren't really that close, even though they were teammates. But that was all they were. They weren't really like a family or like a tight knit group. And I think the reason because they would go on solo missions or they would just not be in in an episode. Well, I'm uh, specifically a couple of characters not being in an episode and in just didn't show that they were really that close to each other. When they were separating most of the time, you don't really see the group all together. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. But with them being all teenagers and having, well, most of them being teenagers and have, having to spend most of the time together in high school, living in the dorms, it makes, it makes them feel closer as a team. In the previous one, and one of the standout characters for me was probably Cyclops. I think this is one of the best winning Cyclops that we have gotten. He's definitely one of my favorite. I could definitely see why she was chosen to be the leader of the team, and also I do like the relationship that he had with his brother, and also the romance that they gave written between him and Jean Grey. I felt like all of those relationships were very believable. And yeah, seeing him grow to the leader that you know that he's eventually going to become, I think it's really cool. I also do like that even though they keep his personality as being a Boy Scout per se, they still saw that, like, in the camping episode, he got caught up with his rivalry with Lance. And I like the fact that Jean Grey had to be kind of his conscious or had to remind him not to act after any way, that they had to be better than that. And so, even though he is still a good attitude in this show, and not like he isn't, not like he always a good attitude, he does make mistakes and everything, but in the end, I think that does make it more believable to see how he grows and to see that he is very capable. With everything that he needs to do. So another episode that I like is the one when he was in Mexico. Because it does so. It does so how he struggled to keep track of his powers. And also how scary it could be. When he can kill anybody just by looking at them. And so that. That episode really did so how much of a struggle it is for him. So overall, I think that he's a really well winning character and he's one of my favorite Cyclopses. I think another one would be the 90s one. But yeah, he's a very good character and very realistic character in my opinion. You hear that? They're getting ready to attack. They don't know what they're getting into. Iceman! Now listen, kid. No! We're the X-Men, Wolverine. We're not kids anymore. You trained us. And you know something? 
We're good. So I already talked about Jean Grey a little bit, but I will talk about Cyclops. But overall, I do like her character. I know that a lot of people who are huge fans of the X-Men say that Jean Grey and Scott are some of the hardest characters to write with because with Jean Grey, you can easily make her just a boring character. And but I believe in this show, they gave her a lot of personality. They gave her some moments where you could see that she had a lot of sass. And they also made her very headstrong, very decisive. And like I mentioned with Cyclops, she is sometimes the conscious of the team. And if specifically Cyclops is conscious. And yeah, the, both of them in this show kind of have the vibe of mother and father, if I'm being honest. Or like the older brother and older sister. Because they, they all are, both of them are very, very by the book. Although Jean, Jean is less so than Scott. But yeah, I I didn't think that they were really well written, and I do love their chemistry as a couple. I also do think that it's very realistic the fact that she wasn't with Scott the whole entire series because at the beginning she was dating this other jock that I forgot his name. But he would date him, and then, but you could clearly see that Scott had some feelings with Jean. At the beginning, it wasn't quite clear if Jean had feelings for Scott. I think that they kind of mentioned that that when when Jean lost control of her powers and Scott really helped her out at that moment. That's when she started to have feelings for Scott. But still, I do think that she always had a soft spot for him. But I don't know if it's necessarily romantic until that episode. And, but yeah, I think that's very realistic and I do like the way that that was written. And I just me really like them together. I think they make a pretty good couple, and I like the character. Give it up, Jean. It's hopeless. I'll be done in a second. Come on, we're gonna be late. Almost done. Look, you want me to blow this door down? So, are we going or what? Teeny Pine, I think it's one of the characters that has the best development, and as the name suggests, the best evolution. I do like the fact that when she first started out, she was scared of her powers and she wanted nothing to do with what was going on. But as time goes on, she really came into her own. She also, I feel, started to love her powers and her abilities. She wasn't as ashamed of them as she was in the beginning. And I think something that showcased this was when the whole team was exposed for being mutants in national television. When and Kurt was still trying to hide the fact that he was a mutant because he wasn't ready to to show himself to the world. It was Kitty who was kind of pushing him. And also giving him that strength to kind of show people who he was and not to hide who he really is. Although he doesn't show himself, doesn't show his true form right away, he does allow him to have that space to choose when he wants to do that. 
I think it's a very nice contrast from her at that moment to how she was in the beginning. And I also think it's a nice contrast between her and Kurt, who, by the way, have one of the best friendships, I think, in the whole entire series. And I, I know that some people do sniff her and Kurt, but honestly, I feel like, for a lack of a better term, they have stimulating energy. It, but that's it for me personally. If you guys sip them, by all means, I'm not going to stop you. But I personally like her with Lance. And I think if the show would have gone on for more seasons, I would have been curious to see how she would have been with this series Colossus. Even though there is an A gap, I still would have been curious to see how the series would have been in her, her relationship with him. But yeah, I speaking of Lance and her relationship, I do like the way that was written and I also do think that they made the two like I was saying, they made the two two couple I just wish that Lance would have had a scene with her, but I don't think that he did. Even so, the domination was pretty good, and yeah, I just really do like this character. This is my first time watching, watching Kitty Pie, so. I think they did a pretty good job. I don't know how she is in the comics, but they did a really good job making her realistic and just showing how confusing this could be for a young woman. Especially since I think she's, she's one of the younger characters. I think she's 13, 14? No, I think 16. But yeah, she's a very nice character. Uh, when it comes to Wolverine, I do feel like he works best as a side character, or as a main side character, rather than the main character, or the leader of the group. But, uh, again, that's just my opinion. I do like the way that he kind of takes the father role within this show, and also how he does guide this generation of mutants. Although they don't really take away his hot headedness or his temper or any of the things that make Wolverine Wolverine. But they do so how he can be a really good teacher and he is very caring and compassionate to little kids. Especially with Kenny, I mean, there was even in one episode when the team was being mind controlled and Wolverine had to fight Kenny. Wolverine, like, I, you know, I can't hear you, Cat Pine. I thought that was just a really cute moment for some reason. And also, I do like the fact that with um, Rogue, he does show, again, his compassionate side, maybe even more so than with Kitty, but in a different way, like, with him, and uh, with, with Rogue, I do feel like he can relate, he can relate to her a lot more than with Kitty, but I just think that seeing him being kind of the father figure was really cute. And I do feel like this is my personal favorite Logan slash Wolverine out of all of them. But again, that's just my opinion, that's just me. I'm not hating on the other ones. They're all great. Now with Storm, I think that she was a really good character for the most part. I just wish that they gave her more storyline. And also, the game we're watching do. Seeing like Logan was 
Mike was me was playing to the role of a mentor slash teacher. But unlike Logan, Storm didn't really have that many episodes to herself and she may really have a storyline like for example Logan had the whole scene with X twenty nine, I believe that's what the character name is which was main for the show but later on was adapted into the comics as his daughter. And I believe in the show she's his daughter as well. But Storm doesn't really have anything like that. She has her nephew, Spike. But it's not like they really have any any type of interaction that you could say really shows how close they are. And I just really wish that they could have gave her a lot more to do. And speaking of Spike, I do like the character. He he was also like X twenty nine was made for the series, but I just don't think that he was integrated into the group as well as he could have been. Like, I just don't feel like he added very much to to it. Yeah. Um. But I don't know if that also has to do with the way that he was brought into the group. Because the way that he was brought into the group was he was being framed by Pietro with stealing money from the locker. And I do believe that they never thought that he was the one that did it. So I they believe him when he said that he was innocent. But I still don't like the fact that they gave him the choice of either you join our group or you stay here. And even though, like Cyclops said, you do have a choice. The choice is either to join or to stay in jail and not have, have Professor X use his influence to... to to get him out of jail. Some choice. Or I need to lower and to make it so that it didn't go into his public record or something. And I just don't think that those two choices were very fair. I think anybody in his position would have chosen to be in the X Men. When you're comparing those two choices. So in reality, in my opinion, that he doesn't really have a choice. But other than that, like I said, he just didn't really feel like part of the team. I didn't really feel like they were really close friends with him. Unlike with other characters. And I also... I don't think it helped that by the end of the series, they, he just left and they didn't really bring him back until a couple episodes later. That made me see that his mutation had really grown and developed and he really got stronger as a mutant. But when he was gone, you didn't really miss him. You didn't really notice that he wasn't there. So I kind of take that as a bad sign that he didn't really fit into the group. And also, I want to say that when they introduced Iceman into the team, even though that he didn't also feel completely part of the group, he felt like a, well, he was a newbie, but I still think that he worked a lot better with the group compared to Spike. Okay, so in season two is where we get more characters added, which I think was a good decision on the writing part, because it made 
when we are in the mansion, it may feel more lively and also it may feel a lot more realistic compared to like the first season where we only had a couple of students and also did raise the stakes a lot more given the fact that as Logan said in the first episode of the second season, it was going to make it harder for them to keep their secret of being a mutant. I mean, the school filled with mutants a secret. And I also do like the, how they added beef into the roster of teachers. I think he was a very good character to add. I do like the way that he was written. And I like the voice acting and everything about him. Yeah, he didn't get any storyline, per se, just like form. But I don't feel like, other, uh, and unlike Storm, I don't feel like he really needed it. I think that it was enough to, just to see his struggle. Also, he did get some episodes to himself to kind of flesh out a little bit his character, which I don't believe Storm got. It's, it's the same to me, because I would have liked to see more Storm. But well, for the most part, I still think that they did a really good job with all the characters and especially with the main character. Hey, chicks dig the Fozzy dude, right? I'm like so out of here. Later. Oh yeah, she can't resist. So Nightcrawler has become one of my favorite X-Men and I came and love him in each of the cartoons that I have watched the 90s this one and also Wolverine and the X-Men. I think that he is a very likable character, a very nice character, and just a really funny dude. Especially in this adaptation, you can really see how chill he is and also how kind and sweet he is. I also do like that they made him a little bit more of shy compared to the other one. Although he does have his, his moments where he kind of so boating. But overall, overall, I would say that he's pretty shy. Especially when it comes to certain things like romance and, and the way that he looks. And. Yeah, I just really like the dimension of um, Nightcrawler in particular. I know that some people don't like his accent, but I could kind of see past that, and I think that it does fit the character and the way the character was written. Also, I find it really incredible that the voice actor for Light Nogami from Death Note. It's the same voice character that does Nightcrawler. So I think that's really cool. And the fact that this, this voice actor has a lot of range is really nice. And, and also shows how talented this voice actor is. And I do believe that this is just a theory that I have. I do believe that he, he would have gotten more screen time if the show would have gone on for more seasons because they have been leading up to possibly showing up who his father was. And I know that they did do a whole arc about him finding out that Mystique is his mother and also that Rogue is his adopted sister. Which, by the way, I think the way that they handled all of that is incredible. And I prefer the way that they handled it in this show compared to, like, the 90s series. Because in the 90s series, you do see that Nightcrawler hears Rogue refer to Mystique as Mama or Mom. But they never acknowledge the fact that they were siblings apart from that. And that's also because 
Nightcrawler wasn't really part of the 90s show, but even so, I went to kind of acknowledge that. A lot more than I was in soon. What are you here for, <sighs> mother? But I'll be talking more about Nightcrawler in a little bit. For right now, I think I'm going to talk about Rogue and how she plays into this. Whoa! A tender moment here? A sorry to interrupt. I swear, he's like an annoying little brother. What's the problem? Okay, that was the best for Halloween in the show. But, um, yeah, Rogue is really uh, an interesting character. I do like that at first she wasn't part of the team, she was part of the Brotherhood, which was closer to the comic, I do believe. And even though she's not my favorite Rogue, I do like the 90s better. I also like this one and how she was winning. I think she was very realistic. If anything, I do wish that they could have given her the flying and super strength, but they did not have the right to Miss Marvel. So yeah, I think that's kind of a shame, but overall, I still think the way that he used her powers were really, were really good. And I think her and Kitty were the ones that were using their powers the most creatively. And their powers made for some very good scenes that were some of my favorites out of the whole show. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And I think that the ones were very creative when it came to all the superpowers, but specifically Rogue and Kitty. The one part that I wish they could have gotten some more screen time was when Rogue killed Mystique, or at least it looked like she killed Mystique. But even they just didn't really give it any time. And I think that they should have given the fact that you just have a main character kill somebody on screen. Granted, it's not like it was very graphic or anything because Mystique was made out of stone thanks to Apocalypse. But still, I think that something like that should have been addressed a lot sooner than what it was. Especially since we have like this one episode with Kitty, meaning this new character. And this character, we don't see her ever again. Not even in the final battle. I don't believe we see her. So, I don't know why we have to dedicate a whole episode to the new character. And also, we, all, we have this episode where Professor X and the fact that he suddenly has a son that he didn't know that he had and that just led into a plot hole because it looked like Professor X in the next season was going to try to help his son and to find his son and yeah if it is a plot hole and not the fault of the writers because they didn't know that the show was going to be cancelled. But still, I think that that episode could have also been used to more develop that uh, the storyline between Rogue and Nightcrawler. Or to just anything else other than that. That didn't really do anything to Grand Steam Machine. And... As far as the way he interacted with, with Nightcrawler and Mystique, yeah, I could understand why Rogue has the trust issues and also why she acts the way that she acts. She's definitely very angry, I guess you could say. But Again, when you think about everything that happened to her, it makes sense. 
and I do like the fact that when whenever I need the show, you see her and Nightcrawler just walk away together after telling the Sphinx to buzz off. Even though personally, I would have been interested in seeing the Sphinx having a redemption arc. And I do think that she could have had a redemption arc and it was building up to one. But still, I, they're just, I respect their decision to just not want to be around the Sphinx. And I understand their decision. And though for Nightcrawler, it didn't really make that much sense. Okay, so to circle back to Nightcrawler and also to think more about possible plot holes or things that they just couldn't get into because the show was cancelled is that I believe that Nightcrawler's father was going to be the next big fan of the of the series. Just how we got season the build up for Apocalypse. I feel like they were building up to showing, to showing us who Nightcrawler's dad was. And I forget the name of the character, but from what I see in pictures, he looks like a pretty cool character. I wish we could have seen him. I also know that there were rumors that Emma Frost was going to be there in the next season. And also that they wanted to do a, a challenge, a challenge, or they wanted to do an adaptation of the Phoenix and Dark Phoenix saga. But the reason that I think that the next big bag was going to be Nightcrawler's father, and also why I think Nightcrawler was going to have a bigger role, is because we didn't get any answers to what experiment was Magneto doing to Nightcrawler when that scared Mystique so much that he ran away with, uh, with Kurt and also did it how Kurt fell into the river and also we didn't really get a clear answer to what the dimension that Kurt hops into when he's he teleporting. We do get to see it, but I do think that having that episode and seeing where he teleports and where he goes while he's teleporting was a very big hint that his father was going to be in the show at one point. And I am kind of sad that they didn't get to tell that story if they in fact were going to tell it. And also, I, yeah, I do wish I could have seen how they would have adapted the, the Phoenix Saga and also the Dark Phoenix Saga. I think they would have handled it very well. But yeah, this is just something that we may never get to see. Although, they did bring back the 90s show, so maybe they might bring back this show as well. But, uh, for right now, and this is just some unanswered questions, in my opinion, that the show left for us. And, I do wish that, at the very least, they could bring the, they could bring the show back at the comic. Because I know that Young Justice had a comic book series at one point before they brought it back for a couple of seasons. So, you know, maybe in the future they we can have a comic book or we might get some more seasons of the cartoon. But, yeah. None of that, we just probably have to wonder what could have been. And I just think that's, that's pretty sad. I don't know when was the last time I felt this, I felt this sad about 
anything that's scary. I know that might be weird for some people, but I did the attack of the character to choose this world. I think that's a testament to how well this they went well the theory and also how well they wrote the character that I did not want it to end. Especially not like this. And I seen them graduate with Jean Grey and Scott and all that. I just thought that it was pretty cool. Also, I really like to see some more heroic stuff because they were trying to leave the school behind, and I do think that they outgrew the spell by the second to third season. So, I just think that they could have done some bigger and better things. And even, even though I think what we got was pretty good, and I think it was fantastic. So overall, I do like the show. If you guys want to watch this, it's on Disney Plus. It's like the 90s show and also Wolverine the X-Men. And thank you for watching this, this video. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Have a good day. And take care.